Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special live webinar hosted by the Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center in partnership with the Embassy of the Republic of Poland in Pretoria in South Africa and the Lesus family. We are grateful for the continued partnership and relationship with the Embassy of the Republic of Poland in Pretoria in South Africa and are honored to have partnered with the Lesus family for this event. Thank you. Welcome to all Holocaust survivors who are joining us today. And thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Welcome to our colleagues from other centers and partner institutions, and welcome to all of you, the public. This event is a memorial event in honor of the 10th Yazid of Dr. Iving Lesus, remembering and honoring his commitment to learning humanity and justice. Dr. Lesus was, among many things, a highly respected specialist urologist and a stalwart of the Jewish community in South Africa. He pioneered kidney transplants in South Africa and served as secretary of the Urological Association of South Africa. He also had a great passion for the city of Johannesburg. Today, we are honored to have members of the Lesus family joining us, and we will have the privilege of listening to Michelle Lesus say a few words about her father, Dr. Lesus. This event will also be a film screening of the extraordinary film, Warsaw, A City Divided, a film by Eric Bednarski. I am pleased to announce that this will be the South African premiere of this extraordinary film. And we are so honored to be the platform that will first screen this film in South Africa. We are thrilled to have Eric Bednarski joining us today. Thank you. After the film screening, I will invite Tali Nate, founder and director of the Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center to moderate a discussion with filmmaker Eric Bednarski about this extraordinary film. So please stay after the screening to be part of that discussion. Also, I would like to thank and welcome Slavomir Granberg from Log TV. Thank you for being with us today and for the partnership. And now it is my privilege to invite Michelle Lusus to address us. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, it is truly an honor to be representing my family at this memorial event to commemorate the 10th yacht site of my dad. Um, it's so difficult to believe that it's our dad's 10th yacht site. In so many ways, it seems like yesterday. And in so many ways, it seems like a lifetime. The memories, the stories, and the lessons remain as alive forever, as ever. His legacy for thousands is healing, compassion, and life-saving. There are the many grateful patients and their families who remember not only his medical expertise, but the care and compassion he took for every single one of them. Not a week goes by when some of us, don't, when someone from the family doesn't bump into someone who says, oh, your dad saved my life, or your, I wasn't actually your dad's patient, but he always came to visit me in the hospital. Or we didn't have anywhere to stay when our, our child was in hospital on Shabbos, so he let us sleep in his rooms. Or my best one is still that I told my, your dad I couldn't afford him, and he said, oh, don't worry, I'll charge the next patient double. So he really, our dad was truly, truly committed to medicine and truly committed to his patients. As um, you said, he was, as you know, he was broadly, widely known for pioneer, pioneering the kidney transplant in South Africa. But to all of us who know him, and I can see a lot of people on the chat, he was just known for his broad range of interests. I know there must be so many people here on the chat who've been on tours with him as a Parktown Heritage Westcliff guide, or who've tasted his homemade mampur, or who've climbed, who've climbed table. Here. Can I please sit down like I did? Like I did, um, oh, I climbed. did yesterday, I managed, this was switched off, look. What? You yeah, have last night. Let me switch it off. No. Apologies. So cool no, no, that's tonight. fine. Um, it's always it's good here. to hear. It's always good to hear familiar voice. 
Sorry, we muted everyone and we muted you too. No, that's fine. I won't take it personally. So, um, so just he really was known for his broad range of interests. Like he was a Parktown Westcliff Heritage Guide. He took tours of the Bramfontein Ceremony. He, um, he loved Table Mountain. And he saw really every second as a blessing not to be squandered at all. He was continuously exploring all the nuances of Judaism. And he did this in a really active, curious way as he conducted all aspects of his life. He had his own homemade shofar collection. He wrote um, an accompaniment, a company book to the Haggadah, which a lot of people I know still use at their Pesach tables. And he always supported, actively supported the continuing Holocaust education. And his vast library of Holocaust books now has a home at the, Holocaust, the Joburg Holocaust Center. But amongst all of this, he was our dedicated husband, dad, and grandfather. His legacy for us really was his love, his kindness, his knowledge, his learning, and his humor. He kept on, he drilled into us that only boring people get bored. And there was always so much to learn. In our dad's most sickest days of suffering, he maintained his characteristic sense of humor and he never ever complained. I would like to end by quoting what Rail, our brother, said to us on my dad's 10th yacht site. I'm sitting in dad's study, the sophisticated medical journals with all his contributions, plus the little curiosity of strips of magnets for him to make bookmarks, the many pens, symbols of creativity, knowledge, and communication, the glow of yachtside candles around the world are barely visible next to the radiance, love, and awe flowing from such an incredible life. How lucky we are. Ten years have not eroded but strengthened his presence. Thinking about our dad is like a warm hug. And this is what tonight is about. It's a way of us bringing together this threat to remember our dad in a way that he would have appreciated. An evening that is about other people, about learning, about discussion, and about humanity. So I really thank you all for being here. And I thank Tali and her team for allowing us the privilege of co-hosting such an important event that my dad would have appreciated because we know that he would have definitely been the first one to register for something like this. So thank you. And I hope we all have a meaningful evening that he would have appreciated. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Eric, thank you so much for sharing with us in South Africa this film. Um, Eric, of course, is the director, writer, and producer of this film, but he was born in Halifax, Canada, and he actually lives in Canada. Um, of course, you do have uh, roots in history and filmmaking that you studied in uh, North Africa and Europe, and uh, you did quite a lot of documentary work and uh, you won many, many awards. Uh, and, and if you don't mind uh, me embarrassing you, let me just share with our audience uh, that uh, you uh, won the Gemini Award, uh, the Writers Guild of Canada Awards uh, nomination. You were awarded the Decoration of Honor uh, from the Polish culture, uh, of Polish culture by the Polish Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. Your films were broadcasted all over the world, in, including many, many places like the United Nations and the European Parliament and the State Museum of Auschwitz-Birkenau. So this is really incredible achievement. And what I want to ask you, Eric, uh, how come this idea for this particular film came about? Well, first of all, I just wanted to thank, uh, thank you, Tali, and the uh, Johannesburg Holocaust and Genocide Center, um, the Polish Embassy, and the Lizus family for, for this memorial event, which I'm very proud. It's an honor to be a part of. Um, so the idea of the film came about because um, I have a 
Polish connection. My father is from Warsaw and uh, he's actually 92. So he lived through the Nazi occupation. To cut a long story short, uh, about 16 years ago after film school, I uh, made contact with some uh, distant family uh, because there were sort of rumors in my family that there was this amateur filmmaker who had shot a lot of films before the war, but then had actually shot footage in Warsaw during the war. And I thought this was, I wasn't sure what to make of this story, but eventually I did see some of the amateur footage that he'd shot from, from before the war. And I ended up making contact with his descendants and they showed me the footage that I incorporated into the film you, you saw today. And I realized that this footage well, sh should be seen by the world because it's unique footage. The footage we know from the Warsaw Ghetto was shot by uh, the Nazis, by the German occupiers. Um, there's some amateur German material, but most, most of the footage we know that has been seen countless times in documentaries, um, programs over the years, it's the propaganda footage that was shot by film crews in the summer of 1942. There's actually an excellent film made about that called The Film Unfinished. Um, so what I wanted to do with, with this discovery, this found footage, was put the footage into context uh, to show the footage uh, in the city of today to try and, well, find out where the footage had been shot um, to show basically the, the division of the city. I wanted to show what happened to the city. Um, like I said, I have strong Warsaw connections. I've always been fascinated by the tragic history of this city. So putting the footage into contact, context and sharing it was um, were the goals behind making this film. And I guess that's that's how it came about many years ago, but it's been a long journey. Absolutely. And, and, and thank you for sharing that because it's so interesting and also to know that this amazing footage that you shared with us is actually somehow connected to your own family. And, and as you said, everything that we are teaching and many, many others are teaching is from perpetrators. Uh, uh, viewpoint, but what you try to do, and I, I thought very successfully, is to tell the story from witnesses and then survivors. So, so you really told the story from from the the through the eyes of 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 the other side, uh, and also I thought the film is so special because it is the story of the city. It's the yes. story of the city of Warsaw during the war, during the Holocaust, after the war and the memory of those days today. So maybe tell us a little bit about the process of making the film. How long did it take you to, to make the film? And just how did you find these amazing witnesses and survivors? Well, well as I said, uh, it was around the time that I finished film school that I came upon this found footage. And it was one of the reasons why I ended up moving to Warsaw for a very long time. I've been back in Canada for a while now, but I lived in Warsaw for many years. Um, so finding the footage was a motivation to really explore the city, explore the city's past to try and understand um, the layers of, of the city, because as you know, most of the city was destroyed, then it was nationalized, it was rebuilt in the Soviet communist system. Um, so it was, it was an incredible journey and started so many years ago. And, and during that journey, I met many people, including um, the survivors you see in this film, I early on connected with an organization called Children of the Holocaust, which has its headquarters in Warsaw. It's, 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 it's an organization that operates throughout Poland. Uh, it's it's an organization of Holocaust survivors who were, who were children at the time of, of the Second World War. And I showed the survivors in Warsaw this footage, and one thing led to another, and I eventually decided that the, the two women in the film, Agatha Boldock and Kristina Budnitska, would be, would be perfect. And I thought it would be interesting for non-Polish viewers to see the fact that there are survivors still living in Warsaw. I wanted to show that continuity. These are people who were born before the war, who survived the Holocaust, and who still live there today. So that was another, I guess, maybe slightly original angle. Um, but it was just, a, it was a journey that took many years. We completed the film in 2018. 
Um, I started really shooting footage for the film in about 2010 um, with the National Film Board of Canada. So uh, it was, yes, it was a very humbling uh, experience. Well, absolutely unbelievable. And, and it's work of love. You can see that uh, of dedication and love and, and a real connection uh, of your... Also, the, the, the focus on architecture is really interesting. And I wonder if you can just talk to us a little bit about this angle that is so unusual in films. I, you know, I saw so many films about the Holocaust, so many films about, about the city of Warsaw or Poland, but none looked at architecture and architects as perpetrators on the Nazi side. Well, I guess it helps that my father is actually an architect from Warsaw. So I grew up uh, with architecture in, in my in my household and also learning, as I said, about the history of Warsaw, about the Holocaust, about what happened um, to that city, uh, obviously during the war and after with its rebuilding. Um, but what I wanted to show was not only the story of what happened to, to Warsaw, to Jewish Warsaw, but to show uh, the attack uh, on the city itself as a, as a kind of a physical entity um, the Nazi German plan for Warsaw was to be reduced to almost nothing, as we saw. And that is just so, it's almost unbelievable, in, incomprehensible to think that there was this plan to almost wipe Warsaw from the map. So I wanted to show that. That's why we sort of start off with this plan, this dream, Nazi dream, that thankfully wasn't fully realized, obviously, tragically, part of it was realized, but it wasn't fully realized. And, and I wanted to show how these bureaucrats, these city planners, some architects played a part in genocide, how basically bureaucracy, spatial planning, city planning all came together. Decisions were made that affected hundreds of thousands of people, not only being moved around, having everything taken from them, but eventually being murdered. And, 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 then, and also the city being, most of the city being destroyed. So I guess this is also um, maybe an original angle, but I just felt very, very strongly having that connection to Warsaw and living in, in Warsaw and finding this footage and talking to these survivors to somehow bring it all together. Yeah, and it is, it, it came together really beautifully. And as I said, it's a very personal, you can feel it's a very personal storytelling of yours. And now I didn't know about your father. So now I, I see another layer. And, and um, so many people always expect a Jew to tell the story of the Jews, yet you are Canadian of, of you know, Polish descent, but you're telling a, a, a story about a city, about the Polish side, about the German side but very sensitively about the Jewish side. And uh, what you also go into is the issue of memory and how it is remembered today. So maybe speak to us a little bit about building the script, you know, the script for the film and, and connecting between history and memory and bringing it to today. For example, the tram, uh, the tram of memory that so few people know about. I didn't know about it. I went to Poland 20, 30 times. So maybe speak about that. Certainly. Well, maybe I'll begin with that tram. So every uh, January on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, this empty tram, this kind of ghost tram, travels through the city of Warsaw, through the former ghetto area, throughout the city. And I started seeing this tram, well, probably about, 11, 12 years ago, and I just thought to myself, wouldn't this be a powerful, wouldn't this be a moving way uh, to kind of take people on a trip in, in my film? I think it's extremely powerful to see that symbol sort of as a memorial to the murdered Jews of Warsaw. So there's that. There's also the March of Remembrance that happens every July. It happened last week, and it commemorates the deportations to Treblinka, which started uh, in the summer of 1942, and I guess went from July into September, and some 300,000 people were were deported to Treblinka to their deaths. And I, I took part in that march a number of times, and I just also felt this was something I wanted to show, because 
it's 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 an incredibly important gathering of people. There's survivors there, there are residents of Warsaw, and it's and it's showing the city, the present day city, kind of connecting with its tragic past. I mean, people who live in Warsaw have to deal with this horrific history on a daily basis. Um, so these were the sorts of things that I hoped to to show from the start when I started working on this film many years ago. And uh, also that layer of, of rebuilding. Most people don't realize that there were these communist housing estates built on top of the ghetto, on, on the rubble. Um, in some cases, actually incorporating the rubble, recycling, reusing this rubble uh, to create new bricks to build this sort of socialist utopia. Um, and so I also wanted to incorporate that to give people an idea because many people, well, a lot of people I talk to say in North America or, or outside of Poland, don't really know what the ghetto looks like today. So I also wanted to include the boundary, those markers, there are over 20 markers throughout the city of Warsaw, which show where the boundaries of the ghetto ran. And that's also incredibly moving just to see the scale of the ghetto that as Eleonora Bergman, one of the, one of the characters in the film says, this was the heart of Warsaw. And, and actually many present day Varsovians, residents of Warsaw don't realize how much of the present day city was actually once in, uh, in the ghetto. So th these are some of the things that I hope to, to show, to, to, to show what's being done today in the city of Warsaw connecting with the past, showing the present. Yeah, and I think that you really succeeded in, in getting these multi-layers. There are so many layers of, of, in, in this film. And actually, I, I told you I watched it quite a few times. And here in the chat, uh, Michael Golding is saying, second time he's watching it, it's as brilliant as you know the first time that he, he watched it. And uh, just the layering that you managed to get uh, geographic layering, the fact that people don't know about the two uprisings, about the fact that the Germans had a quarter of their own, uh, you know, in the city, uh, the fact that uh, Warsaw is a very flat city, but now there are sort of heights in the area where the yes. ghetto was. Uh, so, so I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about these unknown angles that never appeared in other movies and that when you look at it now two years after you finish the film and the film is showing around what do you notice now about what you included and in, uh, in, in those unknown facts uh, that you included well um i guess i'm still kind of shocked by the history of warsaw that it's so extreme that there could be a concentration camp that was actually functioning, uh, that there were these slave laborers who were dismantling the ghetto. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that there was actually a camp. What other uh, European capital had a concentration camp that was actually functioning in it? So it's things like that, or, or this plan, this sort of dream, Nazi dream, vision for Warsaw. Every time I see that, I think, what a horrifying, like what a horrific, plan that was. Um, and, and just, as I said before, just this, this assault on the city, uh, not only the inhabitants, whether they were Jewish residents of Warsaw or non-Jewish residents, but just this, this hatred towards a city, just wanting to wipe it away and, and how hundreds of thousands of people's lives were affected, turned upside down. So, um, I guess also the, some of the documents that I came across, like the, the German company that built the wall, talking about how many bricks, we never think of that. We never think that there were companies that built concentration camps, companies that built ghetto walls, architects who designed concentration camps or, or companies that profited from the construction of, of the ghetto. Also given the fact we're in a pandemic now, what gets me every time I rewatch this film is the layer of disease, the Nazis using this, this, uh, the excuse to herd the Jewish inhabitants of Warsaw into the ghetto, 
for safety reasons, saying that Jews were spreading disease, that Jews were immune carriers of disease bacteria. It's, it was extremely cynical, it was, but it was very effective. And they built up fear and they built up anti-Semitism and they built up, well, they built up the ghetto. So, so watching it today uh, in the context of a, of, a, of a pandemic, I certainly, that comes out for me. Yeah. Um, Eric, we have the honor of having uh, one of the survivors. We have few survivors uh, with us today. But uh, Pinchas Guta uh, survived the, um, the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, he, he was uh, uh, originally from Wuj, but then was in Warsaw. Pinchas, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself or I can ask you to unmute. And um, maybe I, I'm, I'm sort of forcing you to come into the conversation. I'm sorry, but uh, you are a friend. And uh, Pinchas, how, how did you feel about seeing that footage uh, that maybe you never seen before and just see that film about uh, where you were for, for two years, more than two years before you were sent to Majdanek? Well, I, uh, I was quite uh, uh, moved by the, by the film. And I think the film brought out many aspects of uh, that the world doesn't really appreciate or know about. Uh, both inside the ghetto and outside the ghetto. You know, I walked, as you know very well from my testimony, I walked inside the ghetto and I was in the ghetto from the, um, you know, in the ghetto itself. Uh, where, uh, but in Warsaw, we arrived in Warsaw at the end of 1939. So I was there from, for about three, three and a half years until after the uprising. And I felt that uh, this particular film is a very important historical um, document because it, it shows different aspects. It, it shows the cynicism of the Germans. It shows what happened on the other side uh, of Warsaw. It shows attitudes. It, it shows many things that normally in documentaries, I've seen quite a few documentaries I've, I have in my possession you know, uh, footage uh, which also has not been shown around the world about the Warsaw Ghetto. But I really want to compliment uh, 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 the gentleman who lives in Canada, where I live, uh, for making this film, because I think it's an extremely important document. And it actually, I, I watched it, you know, with kind of bated breath. I mean, every, I kind of relived a lot of the a lot of the feelings and emotions that I went through when I was in the Warsaw Ghetto, especially the children that you show, I mean, they were so important uh, bringing food into the ghetto and you saw what happened to them on the other side. Majority of people don't know anything about that, how they actually fed a lot of the families and the Warsaw Ghetto and that smuggling was the most, one of the most important things of bringing food into the ghetto. Because calories, you know, we were given 180 calories and everything was ersatz. It was really not really. Everything was made from, 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 from God knows what. It was like chemically made. The honey was chemically made. Everything was, was not made properly. So I, I really want to congratulate uh, and, 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 and feel that this film is in a very important, as I said before, I'm just repeating myself, it's an important document for the future of Holocaust education and, and memorializing what actually happened in a city like Warsaw before the war. So I think it's very important. And I think I would like to thank him for making it. Well, thank, thank you. you thank you very much. Those words mean a lot. And thank you for, for watching the film today and being here with us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and I you. thought, Eric, because uh, Pinchas lives in Canada, in, uh -huh. in, uh, not next to you, he, he's in, uh, Tor in Toronto, but, uh, but maybe, you know, I can put you in touch and uh, oh, that'd be great. It, can yes. be, it can be a nice uh, addition to, to the Canadian, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, um, educational material, as Pinchas said, about, about Warsaw and about the Holocaust. So we we running uh, very late, but uh, a lot of people stayed with us because it was so fascinating. 
So, so Eric, just to finally, just to thank you and thank you, Pinchas, for, for, for agreeing to say a few words. Uh, thank you. And uh, Eric, just thank you for the film, uh, for your work and uh, for the launch of this film in uh, South Africa. I wish you was, you know, you could be here in person. I know. With the, with the pandemic is not possible, but hopefully, um, you know, one day, uh, one day in the future, we can host you and uh, and work with you again. Um, and uh, to to all uh, all those that made this event possible, the Embassy of Poland in South Africa, and of course the Lissus family. Michelle, you spoke beautifully about your dear father. I really thank you and your family for all the support throughout the years for the collection in our resource center for this annual, uh, um, in a way, not only a yard site and, and remembering of your father, but celebrating your father's life and, and legacy. And uh, I thank also Eric uh, uh, Bednarski for your wonderful film and to Slavomir Grunberg and Log TV for being such good partners of ours for many, many years and allowing us to use all their films. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, hoping to see you again soon. Please say, stay safe, uh, stay healthy in this uh, challenging world of ours, and we will see you soon. Good Thank night. you once again as well. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye.